Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you all had a great weekend and a wonderful Father's Day. Um, so again, thank you for joining us for our webinar, Custom Fresh Demystified. Um, the reason for the title is that we know there are several ways uh, custom crush houses can serve their clients. Uh, for example, some facilities are crush and storage. Um, others could have bottling lines that can take you all the way to, from grape to bottle. Um, at Rack and Riddle, we're um, a little different and unique in that we also, um, in addition to still wine services, offer grape to bottle and everything in between for full production of Mato Champenois sparkling wine. My name is Cynthia Faust, and I am here with Penny Gad Coster, our Executive Director of Winemaking, and she's in charge of all still wine and sparkling wine services here at Rack and Riddle. And um, we're very happy to present to you our services for production of sparkling wine today. And to start off, we're going to describe um, the three different ways that you can use Rack and Riddle to produce your own bubbly. Hi, Penny. Hi, everybody, and welcome. So we're, um, we do three um, different ways of sparkling wine. You can bring your base wine to us, and we can take you through secondary fermentation in the bottle. We can also start you off with grapes and go all the way to the bottle. And then we also have a really fun uh, private label uh, sparkling shiner program as well. So just to expand a little bit more on what uh, Cynthia uh, just brought up about the three different kind of programs that we have. Um, so our, our biggest uh, program is our grape to bottle program where you actually bring your grapes and we bring that all the way to bottling. Um, for sparkling wine, that would be all the way to disgorging as well. Uh, and we have the capability to actually do full packaging. Uh, we can do uh, cork uh, labels, diff two different types of labels for sparkling, uh, and um, capsules, uh, the whole process. Uh, then our base bottle is where you bring us your base wine and we finish it, whether it is needing to be cold stabilized, heat stabilized, uh, or if it's just ready to bottle and we just need to add the yeast to it. Um, and then uh, our, our fun project that Cynthia mentioned is our private label. Uh, we make uh, shiners, uh, sparkling wine shiners, that then you can put your own label on. Uh, if you want to put your own cork on, your own capsule, we can do that as well. Uh, and the other part of that is if there's a special type of dosage that you want to do on that wine, uh, we can work with you uh, with that program as well. So, Penny, um, why would a client choose Rack and Riddle for their sparkling wine project? So, one of the uh, reasons, one of the biggest reasons, is that we do specialize in sparkling wine. Uh, even though we do do uh, still wine as a custom crush, really the specialty is in sparkling wine. There's a lot of specialized equipment that goes along with that, uh, disgorging equipment, uh, cap, cap and bedoulers, uh, special corkers, um, special labelers, and so we provide all of that uh, equipment. And most of that at this point is new with our company as we made the move uh, from Hopland to Healdsburg. Uh, so very state-of-the-art equipment that we have here. The other reason to choose us is that we have the expertise in sparkling. Uh, I've been in sparkling uh, for the last 20 years, and then our team of uh, teams have all been working with sparkling for 10 or more years as well. Uh, and then our customer service. Um, we really do love working with uh, clients. We uh, expect uh, that they're going to consider our facility, their facility, uh, and work with us as partners uh, with all of their pro projects. Penny, what size clients are really geared towards rack and roll facilities? So, with the equipment that I was talking about, the specialized equipment, we've also looked to expand our process to very small clients as well. So we have clients down to 250, 500 gallons, uh, all the way up to thousands of gallons. Um, 
So we really have a, a broad range of uh, clients that we can take here. Uh, with our new smaller line that we've just put in in the last couple of months, uh, we can really hand do a lot of the smaller clients. Uh, they don't have to go on to our bigger line. Um, and then we're, we're also good for the mid to large producers with our, our main uh, disgorging and bottling line as well. What would be some tips, some advice for a client to start to prep their project to bring it to Rock and Riddle? So and this is always a, a question as people are starting out, uh, you know, what do I need to do? What do I need to do different? All kind of the mysteries of sparkling wine versus still wine. Uh, so with that, when you're starting out with us, uh, consulting with business development, consulting with myself, uh, with uh, Cynthia and business development to start with, uh, to get a contract together and kind of work out the process that you want to, uh, how you want to make your wine, uh, so that we can kind of customize that contract. And then uh, talking with the winemaking side of it to come up with protocols. Uh, sometimes people have already worked with sparkling wine and have some ideas about what they want to do. So uh, determining what protocol and where do we want to land at the end. Uh, and then kind of the third uh, thing is how involved do you want to be with us and with your project? Uh, some people have the time to uh, spend a lot of time with us and oversee the processes. And then other people uh, don't have that time. Uh, they have their own wineries. And so uh, we work together with those protocols and then you come as you would like to be here. So uh, harvest just around the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what what would you say that people need to really be looking for out in their vineyards at this time? So that's the other question that other people have. They know that the grapes need to come in a little bit earlier, uh, but that's kind of scary. You know, how early is too early? How late? Um, really going out just like you would with your still wine grapes, uh, but starting that process earlier. Uh, start looking at them at 14 or 15 and start tasting them, start looking at the chemistries. Generally people pick between about 17 and 21. Ultimately though, just like still wine grapes, you want to go out there, you want to start getting that flavor profile. So if it's a Chardonnay and you really want the, the lemon, lime uh, qualities, you know, when you start getting that uh, to determine when to pick, or if you want it a little more aptly, maybe it's a little bit later in the game. Uh, so really going out and just tasting what it is that you want in those grapes, because that's what you're ultimately going to get in the end. So can you describe um, what the typical experience would be for one of our back and middle clients when they're going through a sparkling wine? So we really, again, I, I can't emphasize enough that we really do like to partner with our clients. Um, we want you to be a part of the process. We don't want to dictate that process unless you want us to. Uh, but even at that, we still consider it a partnership. Uh, very open door policy. We like people to be able to come and uh, visit their wines, taste their wines, oversee the processes. So even though we, we wouldn't allow you to climb up a ladder and, and maybe do additions, uh, you're still welcome to come and taste and uh, work with us on your wines uh, whenever it is a good time for you. How can someone be involved in the project so that they can really take that great story back to, to the brand, to their tasting room, and really impart that upon their customers? So we really do encourage people to be a part of the uh, process. Uh, with that, uh, you can then tell your clients what has actually happened and that you've actually put your hands on that wine, um, whether that's just with the, the customization of a dosage or uh, bringing in those grapes or processing the wine and then bringing it in and working with us through the process. So all of that can then go back to your clients and you can really feel like you've been a part of that process. So we've been talking um, really about grape to bottle um, so far. How is a base to bottle project a little different than grape to bottle? 
So the difference is, is that you bring in your base wine at whatever stage you would like, um, whether it's just after fermentation, whether it's after cold stabilization and filtering, uh, bringing in uh, your base wine so that then we can kind of finish the process and put it into a bottle uh, at a, a cap and bedoul or bedoul and a cap, uh, and uh, then put it into bins for garage. Uh, so that wine can be really at any phase after fermentation. Uh, we even have some people actually bring us juice. So uh, really, uh, we can work with a lot of different processes there. And that brings us to our uh, what we call the private label sparkling shiner program. Can you talk to us about that? So this is really exciting. Uh, we have wines available uh, for you to taste. Uh, you can that work with us uh, on special dosages and we can be very creative with a dosage whether it's just working with sugar uh, and a little bit of water or whether it's sugar in one of your wines. Uh, grape concentrates, lots of different things that we can do. So we really want to work with you uh, to come up with something that's a little bit special, even though it's the wine that we are making. Uh, there are lots of different ways that we can work with that. Um, maybe it's adding a little bit of color. Um, lots, uh, again, the, the options are kind of endless. Um, with that, uh, then in mind, some of the turnaround time, we really are looking at two to three months. Uh, turnaround from the time you uh, decide on the wine uh, all the way through the process uh, to get your label, any supplies. Um, so two to three months from start to end. This is a really good way for people to dip their toe in and start the story while they're maybe doing a great to bottle program. It really is. It's a way to actually kind of start the program without actually uh, having to produce a sparkling wine. Sometimes people actually go on, they'll, they'll do the shiners just to kind of start, but that year they may also bring in grapes or maybe they bring in base wine. Uh, so it's a way to kind of jump start uh, and start your clients uh, thinking about you as being a sparkling wine uh, producer. So again, let's talk just a little bit more about how it's customizable because that's really important to people to have their own look. It is. So I've already kind of talked about uh, the custom dosage, but you can also really customize your packaging, um, whether that be a wet glue label, a uh, pressure sensitive label. Uh, we can provide bottles for you to take back and actually design your labels. And then we do have some specs uh, depending on what type of label uh, you want to work with. Uh, you can also customize your capsule. There's lots of different things now with capsules these days where you can actually make the capsule look like it has a neck label. Um, just putting your name on the cork, putting your names on the capsules, uh, different types of neck labels, and all of that you can work with us on. Uh, Cynthia and her uh, team can really help uh, make that very uh, you. Uh, then the other thing that can be worked on is the time on tirage. Uh, so how long is it on the yeast? Uh, generally we have uh, products anywhere from 12 to about 18 months uh, and then some that can be a little bit shorter uh, depending on what that is, whether it's a rosé uh, or, or a brute. Um, so we can kind of work on that. You can actually uh, uh, work with us and say, boy, I really like that wine, but I would really like this to be a reserve type wine. And we can set that aside and work with you on it. Um, and then with that, customize the dose for that as well. And going back to labeling, um, up until just recently, we were only able to do uh, wet glue neck labels. Right. Um, and now we have a, a wonderful little offline little, little labeler and that we can uh, do pressure sensitive now as well. So that's, we've definitely expanded the options. Yeah, and that, that's really nice, especially for those of you out there that are already doing pressure sensitive. Uh, when we had to do the uh, wet glue, uh, that was hard because you had to come up with a whole new setup. So this way then we can kind of accommodate your existing label uh, to be able to put that on a sparkling wine bottle. So we do actually have a special that's going on now through, uh, it's, it's coming up through the end of June, end of the 
uh, the month, um, where we're offering professional photos of your brand as they're coming off the line. Uh, we'll do a little social media video for you as well. And our own Elizabeth Nixon will um, do a custom press release for you too. So it's a great little social media package that you get uh, to introduce your new wine. A lot of fun. That's very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit now. We've been talking about sparkling wine. Let's uh, talk a little bit about our still wine services as well. So the still wine services mirror somewhat uh, the sparkling wine services. We can accommodate grape to bottle. We have a facility out in Geyserville where we can process your grapes uh, to your protocols. Um, uh, bottling contracts, we have actually quite a few people that bring us wine at some stage, bulk wine, uh, to be processed or it's actually ready to be bottled. Uh, so we're, we're able to really work with a wide variety of um, wines that come into the facility. Uh, and then service is a la carte. Uh, with that, if you just need a cross flow or you just need a cold stabilizing or you just need it to be bottled or labeled, uh, all of those are things that we can do uh, with you. Uh, and we can really customize the, the contracts as well to uh, meet whatever needs you, you have. So um, that is wrapping up our presentation. We're going to move on to some, some questions. We have two facilities, uh, one in Healdsburg, that's our production house, where we do all of our still wine bottling and all of our sparkling wine production. And then we have our facility out in Alexander Valley, which is where we do all of our crushing, our harvest work all takes place out there. Um, so we would love to have you come in for a tour anytime. Um, just get your eyes on what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of new, really, really beautiful equipment. Um, a lot has been invested into all of our production processes, and we're really, really, um, you know, really happy to have you come and, and look at it yourself. Yeah, very much. Uh, if nothing else, just to uh, check out the uh, sparkling wine and our new equipment, uh, and to come out and meet us. So, um, Penny, it looks like we're getting some really great questions. Um, so let's see here. We love questions. <laughs> so here's one. If people bring grapes in this harvest, at what point would they typically be bottled? So with the sparkling wine, generally we start up that process of bottling or garage bottling uh, around December, January, and Generally, that'll go through June, uh, July, and some of that depends on uh, what you want to do and what kind of style. Some people want barrel-aged wine for their sparkling. Uh, sometimes they keep it for a year or so. So uh, part of that is really uh, what kind of style. Uh, then a lot of people want to jump right in, and right after fermentation, we get going, so that might be December. Um, so really kind of depends on where you want to go. For the still wines, you know, that's really uh, up to the styles that you're up to as well. Uh, we do have uh, barrel facilities, so uh, lots of different options there. Very good. Uh, labels. <clears throat> There's a label question. What kind of labels can I have on my spark wine? <coughs> Excuse me. We did just um, describe uh, the fact that we can now do both pressure sensitive and wet glue. Uh, wet glue seems to be a better choice for folks who are bigger production, sort of the 500 cases and more, it seems to be more cost effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we can also do, we, have, we do very small projects too, down to 132 cases for sparkling, and we can do that um, on our little light. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we have lots of really good, mm -hmm. good options for folks. Yeah. And then for the still wines, uh, we have a pressure sensitive labeler uh, for that. So uh, and pretty high speed uh, line uh, for some of you bigger bigger clients out there. All right, um, here's another one. Can I offer the same wine in my program year after year? And that is one of the, the things that we try to do uh, even as a custom crush facility uh, with Rack and Riddle's wines is trying to make them consistent for year, from year to year. Um, if it is something that you want to do, we would love to work with you. 
than to make sure that we have something allocated for you year after year. Um, so maybe the first year uh, uh, you really love the rosé and you'd like to continue that, uh, we'd love to uh, work with you to actually then have uh, longer term contracts and then we can guarantee uh, a lot better that those wines are available for you year after year. Um, here's a question about compliance. How does compliance work? Um, <clears throat> so what we do is uh, we will add you to our basic permit, your, uh, your trade name, and that allows for you to, um, for the produced and bottled by statement to say produced and bottled by your trade name and then Hillsburg, California. So we make it a pretty streamlined process for folks. Um, we have all the paperwork to fill out and we really just guide you through that whole process. Yeah, and again, we, we really do like to partner on these things. So, um, you know, the easier we can make it for you, uh, the better. better. For sure. So, uh, a question from Pam Welch. Uh, what is the pressure of corking, and does it go up in the bottle after? So, the pressure of corking uh, is about six bar for the sparkling. Um, depending on the age of the wine. So if you are looking at an older wine, it might be at five bar, uh, up to about seven bar. Uh, but ultimately what we're trying to do with the sparkling process, the, the Champenoise uh, process, is uh, shooting for six bar. Um, does it go up in the bottle after? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, the pressure that you have at the time of corking is the pressure you would have uh, at release. Now with time that pressure uh, could potentially go down, but we're looking at years uh, before you really see any uh, big decrease in, in pressure there. So great question. Here's another question from Jessica. Do you have the capability to bottle in 12 ounce cans? Right at the moment, we do not, uh, though we have contracted with outside services to uh, come to our facility and, and do specialized products like that. Yeah, we do. Actually, I do know of a, a third party that has a mobile line that they could go mm -hmm. can use. So, mm -hmm. yes, we, we can handle that. Here's a question from Elijah. Do you do the Charmant process? We do not. Uh, it is something that we've been asked, though, uh, over the last 10 years, and uh, we are looking into the equipment, but right at the present time, uh, we cannot do Charmant. And maybe this is a good time for you to talk about the three ways that sparkling wine can be made. Sure. So there are three methods. Uh, uh, the Charmant process is uh, actually doing that second fermentation in a pressure tank. Uh, and then from there, it's bottled with a counter pressure filler into the bottle. So you have one great big tank, uh, goes into the bottle, uh, it's filtered, uh, and it's a pretty quick turnaround process. Uh, so generally, these are very young wines uh, that, that go through that process. Uh, then uh, uh, the method champenoise, which is what we specialize in, where that second fermentation actually takes place in the individual bottles. Um, so, you know, every little little bottle is its own little uh, pressure tank uh, versus the, the big Charmat tank. Uh, and then the last method is where you actually pressurize uh, or add uh, CO2 to the wine uh, and counter pressure fill that into a bottle. Uh, that could be an inline, it could be a pressure tank. Uh, so no second fermentation takes place there, uh, no yeast, no yeast cultures. Um, basically it's just it's carbonated wine. So the three processes. And right now, uh, as we mentioned, method champenoise is our, 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 our method. Here's another question from Elijah. What tank sizes are available for sparkling wine? So we have a broad range. As we mentioned earlier in the, the webinar, uh, we can really accommodate uh, clients 250 gallons all the way up to, uh, actually our biggest tank is a 50,000 gallon tank. 
Uh, we do have even SOMI clients that make use of those. Uh, and then we have ranges in between, so 1,000 gallons, 3,000, 6,000, um, you know, pretty much name it. Uh, uh, I think we've got it. So, yeah. so the, uh, <clears throat> the minimums for a baseline project, we like to get in at least 500 gallons to, to take you all the way through. It's just best for our tank sizes. And then in terms of grape to bottle, our minimums on that would be 5 tons for sparkling wine and 10 tons for still wine. Here's another question from Tim about custom dosage. What is the minimum case quantity? And can the dosage contain brandy? <clears throat> um, yes, it can contain brandy. Um, and the minimum for that, we, we usually like to have an order of around 500 cases in order to do that as a special setup. So, and what are some other types of um, dosages that you see people do? So brandy is not a problem. We have a few people that uh, do that at present, um, but we have people that use uh, uh, different types of uh, dessert wines. Uh, we have people that actually bring in wine. They want to use uh, using grape concentrates. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of if you have a, a thought about something that you'd like to. Uh, uh, try that we get together and see if we can make it work and make up a, a dosage and do some trials and, and go from there. So there's a lot of different options there. Here's a question from Robert. On your base shiner program, is the base cuvee completely dry or does it already have some residual sugar to start with? Depends on uh, what you're looking for. We uh, do often have wine that's already been dosed uh, that then just uh, needs your label. Uh, but most of what we have is wine that's, that's waiting for orders, uh, basically just uh, ready to be disgorged, so that then you can uh, put your special dose or our dose in. Uh, so the wine is completely dry at that point, so if you don't want any dosage uh, and you like the wine the, the way it is, that's an option as well. We have a lot of people that uh, have actually gone uh, for naturals, so uh, lots of different options there. Here's another question from Tim. Do you ever make Cremant style or lower pressure sparkling wine, for example, pressure about three atmospheres? Not too much. We just haven't had a lot of uh, um, requests for that, uh, but that is certainly something we can do as a second fermentation process. Uh, it just means adding less uh, sugar uh, at the beginning. Uh, that would be if if you actually brought us a base wine. Uh, generally, we're not we're not putting out those those we're not making that as a shiner right now. That would be something. Uh, we'd have to really work with you on. Uh, and then a Cremant, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've definitely done uh, kind of all different uh, ranges with, with sugars and uh, wines in that capacity. Here's another question from Elijah. Could you talk about how costing is structured? So costing is um, when you receive your contract, um, there, it's a very, very all-inclusive contract, and you'll see everything from the services cost to the supplies to the costs for things like the COLA and the TBA filing. You'll also see uh, trash time and how much that costs per month per bin. So it's it's very, very detailed, and then it rolls up into an average you know, cost per case. So you really can see pretty quickly how much you're going to be spending on each case of wine. Here's a question from Jessica. For a five-ton lot of Chardonnay, for example, what would be the typical cost from grapes to finish and from wine to finish? So the services part of that, that's our minimum. So you'd be at around, I think it's around $65 per case. Um, for for the services part of it, and then you would have all of your supplies on top of that. So another twenty bucks plus for supplies, um, and then garage time, etc. Here's another question from Pam: Where does filtering come into the process? 
So uh, if, if you're talking about the um, process just before uh, tirage bottling, uh, it would happen uh, after sugar has been added. Uh, really, we're filtering these down to a 0.45 micron uh, because we don't want any competition with the yeast. Uh, now, I do have some people that go natural, uh, so there's, there's different ways that I, I can work with you on that as well. Uh, but final filtration just before uh, tirage bottling. So not at disgorging, uh, but at tirage bottling, which is the uh, adding of the yeast uh, just before it uh, uh, ferments for making bubbles. All right, very, very good. I think we have answered all the questions. Thank you again so much for joining us today. We really um, enjoyed doing this webinar with you. Hopefully uh, you'll get in contact with us if you have any more questions or if you'd like to take a tour. Penny and I are totally available as are the rest of our team. Um, once again, thank you. Have a really great day. Thanks, Penny. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us.